Hello, and welcome to this month's painting tutorial for the Letcher County Public Libraries. My name is Tessa, and I will be guiding you through this class. Today's painting is a beautiful starry sky with a full moon and a silhouette of trees. It might look difficult, but you can do it. Just follow along with my instructions and feel free to pause the video as needed. Here are the supplies that we need to complete this painting. First, we need a medium-sized square brush, which is known as a bright or flat. It is the brush at the top of the photograph. Secondly, we need a medium-sized round brush. A round brush comes to a fine point at one end. It is the brush in the middle of the photograph. Thirdly, we need a large square brush to paint the background. This type of brush is known as a wash or flat. It is the last brush pictured in our photo. Now, let's talk about paint. For this particular painting, we only need three colors, navy blue, white, and black. Of course, we also need a canvas to paint on. The one that I'm using for this tutorial is a nine by 11, but you can use whatever size you would like to. We are also going to need a palette or plate to put our paint on, an old toothbrush, and some water for rinsing our brushes. It is also a good idea to have some paper towels on hand. Let's begin. Firstly of all, we're going to use our large brush to put in the background of the painting. Dip your brush into the black paint and use it to start painting at the top of the canvas. We want to paint horizontally in nice even strokes. Paint from side to side until you have a solid black section of paint. Use a paper towel to wipe the paint off of your brush, but don't worry about rinsing it just yet. Now, dip the brush into the navy blue paint. We are now going to use a technique known as blending. We are going to start painting with our navy right underneath the black and up into the black just a little bit. Use your brush and go over and over the part where the two colors meet, and this will cause them to blend together. Once you're satisfied with that, dip your brush into the navy paint again, but this time also dip one corner of it into the white. Continue painting like you have been with back and forth strokes, making sure to blend the colors together. Our goal is to make a sky that gradually gets lighter towards the bottom of the canvas. Add more white in the further down you go. Now comes one of my favorite parts. Grab your old toothbrush and dip it into the white paint. Use your thumb to flick the bristles and watch the stars appear. You can add as little or as many stars as you would like. Now, we're going to allow our painting to dry for a few minutes. Make sure to rinse the large brush and the toothbrush and, paint and place it on a paper towel to dry. Never leave your brushes in water as it can cause them to wear down. Once you're ready, we're going to start making our moon.
Pick up your medium bright or flat brush and dip it into the white paint. To make the moon, start by swirling your brush around in a circle. Don't worry if the blue paint shows through or blends with your white because it adds character and depth to your moon. If you're anxious about painting the circle freehand, you can always trace it onto the painting with chalk or a pencil. Paint the entire moon white. You may have to go over it more than once. Now we're going to add some shadows, craters, and highlights to our moon. We do that by mixing little bits of blue and black into the white paint and lightly dabbing it onto the moon with our brush. Dab, dab, dab. That's all it takes. For my first coat on my craters, I'm using white paint with just a bit of blue mixed in. Add some craters with darker colors and some highlights with pure white. Feel free to add as much as you would like. There is no specific way to make the texture of the moon. It is up to your interpretation. Notice how I am very lightly touching my brush to the surface of the moon. Don't be afraid to experiment with colors. If you make a mistake, like adding too much white, like I just did, simply add some more blue or black to your brush and continue to dab away. Here, I am adding some darker blue to the bright white spots I just made because they were too bright for my taste. Feel free to do the same if you would like. Don't be afraid to experiment with color.
Here, I'm adding a little bit of gray to my moon to give depth to my craters. Next, rinse your brush and dry it very well on a paper towel because our next step will be to make the bright halo around the moon with a technique known as dry brushing. Dip your brush into the white paint. Then, Wipe it off on a paper towel. We only need trace amounts of white paint, not too much. Use your brush to draw a circle around the moon. Then go back and add another circle outside of it. Now we can put that brush aside, making sure to rinse it and put it on a paper towel to dry. Pick up the round brush. This is a perfect opportunity to add some bigger, brighter stars. Simply dip the very tip of the round brush into the white paint and touch it very lightly to the canvas. Add as many or as few as you would like. Next, we tackle the trees. Trees can look difficult, but they're not if you use the correct steps. First, we rinse and dry our round brush and then dip it into the black paint. Pick a starting point on your canvas and draw a straight line. This will be the trunk of our tree. Holding the brush like a pencil, start at the top and make a swooping motion down and to the side. Watch the way that my brush moves, just a little swoop. We know that trees are skinny towards the top and flare out the farther down the trunk we travel. So the same thing will happen with our trees. We are going to fill in one side of our trees at a time. Remember, the closer to the ground we get, the larger the branches get. Once you complete one side of the tree, start on the other, working from the top down. Take this opportunity to watch the technique more closely. Here I draw the line of the trunk. And now I begin with the downward swooping motion that makes the branches. Let's draw one more tree.
Remember, the tree is skinnier at the top and flares out towards the bottom.
You can make as many or as few trees as you would like to. I decided to fill in my trees all the way across the bottom of the canvas. Congratulations! You have completed your painting. Find your initials if you would like to and display it proudly. You did some great work today. If you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please do not hesitate to contact me via email or telephone. Thank you for joining and painting along with me and make sure to check back for more painting classes and other fun programs.